Dynasty Warriors is a series that's always meant a lot to me. I have very fond memories of playing Dynasty Warriors 2 at my friend's house when I was just a kid, and that was around 22 years ago if you can believe it. I've played every iteration of the mainline games throughout the years for both Dynasty Warriors and Samurai Warriors. Not only that, but I've played and beaten almost every Warriors spin-off game, barring only a few exceptions, which I will eventually get to. Needless to say, I am a big fan of the Warriors series, and I've always enjoyed its special brand of generally mindless but surprisingly fun hack-and-slash combat. In 2018, Koei Tecmo and Omega Force bestowed upon us Dynasty Warriors 9, a game that most players felt promised a lot, but in reality delivered very little. Longtime fans of the series, myself included, felt like they were either attempting to fix a problem that simply didn't exist, or trying to jump on the open world bandwagon many years too late using an engine that wasn't up to the task. Despite a whole host of problems with the game, Dynasty Warriors 9 still sold pretty well on name alone, racking up over 117,000 sales in its first week on PS4, and then going on to sell around 730,000 copies in its first year. The very first game in the franchise to receive an Empire spin-off was Dynasty Warriors 4, and since then the tradition of releasing an Empire's game for every mainline game has continued. And that brings us to the game that we're talking about and reviewing today, Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires. Let's take a look. So Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires is the latest entry into a long-running series of Empires spin-offs, which made their debut all the way back in 2004. The Empires games differ from the mainline games in a few key areas and generally give players much more to do in terms of strategy, tactics, and control over the gameplay. In the original Dynasty Warriors 9, it had players exploring and fighting across a very large open world, but the Empire's version of the game pretty much does away with that completely. It instead chooses to throw players into a far smaller map which has been sectioned off from the huge open world. Some of you may remember that in most of the older Warriors games, each battle you select is sort of like its own specially designed level. They did sometimes have a few big open spaces within those levels, but there's often a lot of smaller interconnected roads or pathways that get you where you need to go. In this game though, that's not the case. The battles are comparative in size and scale, but you're free to go in any direction you want, whenever you want. On the main menu of the game, you'll be able to select the tutorials, conquest mode, edit mode, gallery, encyclopedia, and of course the options menu. The tutorial section provides three small missions to choose from, and if you're wondering, they are in fact exactly the same as the ones you got in the recent demo. One will teach you the basics of combat and movement, while the other two are the same battle, but you'll be attacking a castle in one of them and defending it in another. Edit mode allows you to design and create custom offices, and as you might expect, there's quite a few options to choose from, including, but not limited to, their facial appearance, hair, physique, accessories, and of course their clothes and armor. Once you've named and created your custom warrior, you'll be able to use them in conquest mode. In fact, the game is quite generous with how many custom characters you can make and store, so you could potentially create a load of them and have them all populate the conquest mode if you choose to. The gallery section allows you to view unlocked artwork, cutscenes, and other media from the game, while the encyclopedia contains a wealth of information regarding characters, locations, and battles from the Three Kingdoms era of China. I'm gonna guess that I don't really have to explain how the options menu works, but there is one important thing in there that is worth noting. The game features two different performance mode, which are called movie mode and action mode. Movie mode runs the game at a higher resolution and 30 FPS, while action mode lowers the resolution and targets 60 FPS, and we'll have more on this choice later in the review. So now we get to the main mode of the game, which is conquest. In this mode, you'll be taking on the role of an officer who's trying to unite the land and rule over ancient China. When you first start up this mode, you'll be given some options, which you can see here. Things like difficulty, permadeath for characters, and whether or not you want your created characters to show up at all. After that, you can pick a scenario to play based on the fables and stories that we all know and love from the Dynasty Warriors series. From the Yellow Turban Rebellion, to the Battle of Cher B, to the Northern Campaign, it's all there for you to play. In the older games, you would select a character and then play through a set number of battles, one after the other, that loosely follow what happened in the actual history, albeit with not much in between them. In Empires, though, you're given control over your own army, and you can choose when to invade other territories, when to lie low, and when to form alliances with other forces. At the start, it's essentially just you on your own, with a dream in your head and no coins in your pocket. You'll need to scout around to find some help, and then, after you recruit your first officer, you'll begin to build your empire. 
The game plays out month by month, and you, as the leader of your empire, have to choose what to do in each of those months. Most actions you choose will consume exactly one month of time to complete. So for example, if it's March and you notice that your kingdom is running low on cash, you can select the Fundraise option, which will take one month to complete and will bring in a thousand gold. Once you're given the money, the game will now tell you that it's April and that it's time for you to choose what to do next. As you progress through the conquest mode, you'll unlock a ton of different choices and options to help you on your journey to rule the land. One of these unlocks is the War Council. You get this option pretty early on, and this is where you set goals for the kingdom every six months. And if you manage to achieve them, you'll be rewarded with bonus XP for your character. Occasionally, your most trusted officers will make suggestions, and the goals are usually things like having a certain amount of food in storage or recruiting a specific number of new officers to the cause. Pretty much anything you select on the left of the screen during a month will progress time to the next calendar month. However, this stroll option is a bit different. If you select Stroll, you'll actually be placed into the large open world map from the original Dynasty Warriors 9 game, and you are free to roam around it and explore it as much as you like. When you first arrive in the Stroll menu, you'll see that you have three actions that you can take. You will be able to take more actions during a Stroll later in the game, but in the beginning you only have two choices. Firstly, you can just navigate the menus and interact with various officers and perhaps try to recruit them. Each time you interact with an officer in this menu, it costs one of your actions and may cause that officer to like you more. You can also spend an action to invite them into your army. You'll notice that a percentage chance is shown and tells you how likely they are to join you before you give them the invitation. The second thing you can do is back out of the stroll menu and go for a physical stroll around the open world, meeting the characters and doing all the things I just mentioned in-game rather than in a menu. It works the same way regardless of how you do it, but you have the option of how you want to approach it, either physically or through the menus. When you feel like you're ready to expand your empire, you can choose to invade another kingdom's territory and take it by force. Although you do have some negotiation and diplomacy options if you'd prefer to take a less stabby path to glory. You do need to be careful though as the enemies can invade your borders as well, and if you choose to do something else while they're attacking you, the game may simulate the outcome and you might actually lose some land. All battles are fought in virtually the same way. If you choose to invade the enemy, you'll be sieging a castle, and if you're being attacked by the enemy, you'll be defending a castle. Combat is also generally unchanged from the standard Dynasty Warriors 9 game, except for the new secret plan system. Depending on how you run your kingdom, you'll unlock various secret plans in the form of equipable cards. During a battle, you can activate them by holding down L1 and pressing a direction on the D-pad. They range from healing your character or providing an attack buff to throwing a huge fireball or creating a damaging tornado. You'll also be able to select a secret plan for the battle itself. To fulfill its conditions, you just have to do what you're prompted to do during the battle. It may ask you to take over three specific tactical locations on the battlefield, for example, and once you do, the plan will commence and give your army an advantage. At the same time though, the enemy army will be doing the same thing, so you'll need to stop their plans to avoid them gaining the upper hand. And lastly, there's quite a few events and scenes that will play out over the course of a single scenario. Certain characters can become close friends, and captured enemies may vow to stand by your side. You can also swear a sibling oath to another character in much the same way that Zhang Fei, Guan Yu, and Liu Bei did during their Peach Garden Oath. You can even get married if you choose to. And as you can probably see by this point, Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires is definitely a different experience, and probably one that a lot of people wouldn't have expected considering the direction that the original ninth game began to explore. Does a slight change of direction make this a good game though? Well, let me try to explain. So what do I personally think of the game now that I've had many, many hours with it before release? Well, it's actually kind of difficult. Some of you probably remember that I did a video on the demo of this game, which only contained the tutorials and the edit mode. In that video, I said that I was very disappointed and really frustrated because, you know, frankly, that demo was plain awful, and I still stand by that, by the way. It ran very poorly, it had constant screen tearing, and it felt like it was just cobbled together. That demo looked and felt like it could fall apart at any second, and that isn't exactly the kind of demo you want to show to potential customers. In fact, I did say you should avoid the full game based on what I played in that demo. I also said that if Koei Tecmo offers me a review code, I may not take it because I just didn't want to play the full game. However, you know, I'm reviewing the game here, they did actually offer me a code, and as I said in one of my recent community tab posts, I felt like I had a bit of a duty of care to all the other long-time fans of the series. You know, I, I kind of felt like I was being offered this opportunity, and that I kind of owed it to the fans of the Warriors games to 
accept it and give the full game a fair chance and then report my findings. And I'm not trying to put myself on a pedestal and say that my opinion matters that much, but you get what I'm saying, right? You know, if I can save someone some cash or just save one person from having a disappointing experience, then it's probably worth doing. So overall, do I like the full game? Um, no. No, I honestly don't. However, if you were to ask me if I like it better than what I played in the demo, then the answer would be yes, absolutely I do. If this entire game was like the demo, it would be sitting squarely in the do not buy and do not support this game category. However, after spending a lot of time with it and really learning the game systems inside and out, I now believe it sits in the average game category. Also, just to add to that, I would without a doubt, 100%, no questions asked, play this game over the original mainline version of Dynasty Warriors 9. Why is that the case? Well, first off, I found something very weird during my time with the demo and with the full game. I even predicted something that turned out to be true, so here it is. When I played the demo, it ran really badly with all the screen tearing and all that, right? Well, when I first booted up the full game, I decided to keep my settings the same as I did in the demo and play the game in action mode which targets 60 FPS. Trying to cover all bases from my review, I went straight to the tutorials which are the same ones we got in the demo, and guess what? It ran really poorly with screen tearing and slowdown. So at that point, my next idea was to change the performance mode to movie mode, which runs at a higher resolution, but at 30 FPS. I then dived back into those same tutorials and all of the problems went away. Now, of course, it feels kind of sluggish because it's at 30 FPS, but whatever, it did fix all the tearing and everything else. So I started my first playthrough of Conquest mode in that 30 FPS mode. I did a handful of battles and it ran fine, it looked a bit better, and it ran at 30 FPS and played fine. After a while, I suddenly thought to myself, what if I was to switch back to 60 FPS mode now and see what happens? So I did that, and then did about five battles back to back, and any guesses as to what happened? Well, I don't think I saw a single instance of screen tearing across all five battles, and it ran at 60 FPS much more often than not. It was like playing a different game, it was a night and day difference, so I have no idea what happened with that. In the demo video that I did, I said perhaps the demo is just an old, unoptimized build of the game, and that the main game would be better. Well, that does kinda seem to be the case here. Playing the battles is just so much better now with a mostly consistent 60 FPS and zero screen tearing. Don't get me wrong, I still don't think it's a good game. I think it's an average to slightly below average game. There's still a lot of problems with it like textures not loading in, weird frame rate dips when talking to characters, and the fact that I just don't enjoy the basic combat system. But having said all that, you can at least play it somewhat comfortably now, and it mostly functions the way it should in regards to battling. Another thing that actually increased my enjoyment of the game is the way that it essentially ignores the vast and mostly empty open world in favour of smaller, walled-off battles. The systems that are at play in the battles still don't work for me personally because I just like the gameplay of the older games. In those games, you would methodically clear out the map while following the objectives. This game, on the other hand, basically wants you to speedrun the battle and move as fast as you can from camp to camp taking them over. Still though, opting to section off the open world into smaller but still kind of open battlefields works much better for me, and while I don't like the actual combat and battle systems, it does feel far closer to the older, classic, and arguably far superior games. During my time with the game, it did take me a good while to learn and understand all of the options that were open to me. The design and layout of the menus does seem a little bit obtuse and perhaps badly thought out, but once you get a handle on what each thing does, it does become quite simple. Despite the combat not being to my tastes, I still generally like the Conquest and Empire systems. Starting from nothing and building up your kingdom to take over the enemies around you to ultimately rule the land is still an enjoyable experience, but again, it has been done better in previous titles. And look, you know, my opinion on the game has definitely improved slightly since the demo. It, it has, you know, I can't get around that, but trust me when I say it's not because I got this game for free. Koei Tecmo have not restricted me from saying anything at all. They have actually been really great to work with so far. I don't think they would pull support from my channel if I gave a bad review. I think the game on its own in a vacuum is fine. If you like Dynasty Warriors 9 and you're interested in picking this up, then you'll probably be alright with it. When it comes to how I feel about it, I just don't think it's that good. But having said that, it is far more playable than the demo would lead you to believe. 
I think it's acceptable on its own, but as a Dynasty Warriors game, I just don't see it. It just feels to me like a different IP entirely. It's as if a small indie studio with no experience tried to make their own version of a Warriors game with a $50 budget. It just about works as a one-off experience, but as far as I'm concerned, a Warriors game it is not. In my opinion, I would describe Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires as the lesser of two evils. For me, it was far more enjoyable than the original game, but that's only due to the fact that it tried to move away from what the original game was and is. If you're someone who didn't grow up with the series, or perhaps this game is your first, I could see you having an okay or decent time with it. In that same line of thinking, if you happen to be one of the people out there who really loved the standard Dynasty Warriors 9 game, then I think this is probably going to be a safe bet for you. I personally don't like the combat system or the way the battles work in the Dynasty 9 ecosystem but perhaps you do, and that's okay, no judgement here. Ultimately, this is still a very disappointing entry in an otherwise fun series, especially for many long-time fans such as myself. I can't speak for everyone else, but in my view, Dynasty Warriors 9 was easily the lowest point for the IP as a whole. I think this Empire spin-off is absolutely the better game, but the bar was set so low that actually being better was relatively easy to achieve. I honestly love the Warriors games, I always have and I genuinely want to see them succeed. But at the end of the day, in its current form, I still cannot recommend this game to you. If you enjoyed the video, I really hope you'll consider subscribing and if you like what I do and want to help support the channel, please check out the first link in the video description down below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.